Welcome back. We are Joanne and Larry Mars with more tips on nature photography. This episode is about lenses. There are many different kinds of lenses that will help you produce various effects, some of which are quite fascinating. We are traveling through Arizona, photographing the beautiful scenery. In order to get a variety of photographs, we use several different types of lenses. With the digital SLR camera, you have the option of changing lenses depending on how you wish to photograph your subject. The lens we use most of the time is a telephoto zoom lens. This lens covers a very large range from wide to telephoto, making it the most convenient lens for us. At its widest, it is great for landscapes and scenery. If you wish to capture a detail, you can zoom it all the way into the telephoto end and really isolate a portion of your subject. The zoom lens is a great lens for almost all your photo needs. But every once in a while, you find yourself wishing you had a little more. I need the longer lens here. <laughs> that is when the super wide or super telephoto lenses come into play. Big telephoto lenses can get expensive and heavy, but they get you in even closer to the action. And with animals, this can be very helpful and safer. Since these lenses can be hard on your budget, renting one just for a trip is a viable way to improve your travel photos. On the other end of the spectrum is the super wide lens. This particular one is a 10 millimeter to 22 millimeter short zoom. At 10 millimeters, it is ultra wide and great for landscapes or tight places where you want to see everything. The wide lens tends to keep everything in focus from near objects to the far off horizon. The telephoto lens is more selective on where it focuses. If you focus on a close object, usually your background will be out of focus. Since we're talking about focus, this is a good time to bring up depth of field. Depending on the type of photograph we wish to take, we can manipulate the depth of field. To start, we set our camera to the manual or aperture priority mode. In the lens, the aperture or f-stop is what determines the depth of field. If we use a large aperture number, such as f16 or f22, we have a greater depth of field, and more things will be in focus. If we roll our aperture down to a smaller number, such as f2.8 or f4, we now have a shallower depth of field and fewer things will be in focus, as you can see in our background here. So to achieve a greater depth of field, set your f-stop to a higher number, such as f16, where both your foreground and background are in focus. Set your f-stop to a lower number, such as f2.8, and you will get a much shallower depth of field, now making the background out of focus in this same shot, and a more pleasing photo in my opinion. In this series, we have encouraged you to take your camera off of fully automatic. We know we have gone into great detail about these lenses and camera settings, but please remember, you can get great pictures with a much smaller and simpler point-and-shoot camera as well. You know, Larry and I get so excited using our different lenses. We hope that the tips that we gave you during this session were helpful to you. Join us next time on the road to being a better photographer.